Hi there, my name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. In this lecture, we'll look at transfer function analysis in the Laplace domain. Transfer functions are a bit easier to deal with than some of the things we've been looking at, since if we're talking about transfer function analysis, we're assuming that all of the initial conditions are zero. So none of the capacitors have a electric charge stored in them, and none of the inductors have magnetic energy stored in them. So I'm going to draw a fairly boring circuit here. We'll have a voltage source followed by a capacitor C with an inductor L, a resistor R. Now when we talk about transfer function analysis of a circuit, remember transfer functions relate an input to an output. What's the input? What's the output? Well, it depends on the circuit and what you're doing with it. You have circuit variables of voltages and currents. Currents are defined as flowing through particular branches, and voltages are defined either between different nodes in the circuit or at a particular node relative to a special node that we call ground. If we have a circuit like this, we don't always bother to write in a ground explicitly, although you will see people doing stuff like putting a ground symbol here and then not writing this wire here in the middle. And basically, you pick a voltage or you pick a current and you make that your input and you pick a current or a voltage and make that your output. I'm going to label the voltage source here as having a voltage VIT. By the fact that I have that subscript I, it won't surprise you that this is going to be my input variable. So rewriting the circuit in the Laplace domain, I write this with a capital V sub I S for my voltage source. And I'll write my capacitor as having an impedance of 1 over Cs, which I'll write down here since I think I'm running out of room up there. And then my inductor has an impedance of Ls, and my resistor just has a resistance of R. What do I want to define as the output? Well, actually, I'm going to do two examples. So right now, this is going to be example one. And in example one, what we'll do is we'll define the current flowing through this loop here as my output. So I'm going to write this as I sub O S. Over here in the time domain, I could write that as little i sub O T, where the O stands for output. Now I'm picking the current here deliberately because most examples that you'll probably see where people set up an example like this will define the output to be some voltage. And we'll do that in a second, but I want to run this example first. Well, the output in the Laplace domain is equal to the input voltage divided by the impedance of this series combination of elements because the input is defined as a voltage and the output is defined by a current. So that's what we get according to Ohm's law. So the way I'm going to write that division is to write it as VIS sitting out here in front, and then I'll write it as one plus the impedances. So I have one over CS plus LS plus R. So first I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by S because I want to really clear out that S in the denominator. So I'm going to write S over 1 over C plus L S squared plus R S. Now I really want to get the S squared by itself without a constant, so I'll divide the numerator and the denominator by L. So I'll have S divided by L in the numerator, and then I'll have S squared plus R over LS plus 1 over LC. Okay, so let me take this whole mess here and define it as something. I'm going to define it as H1S to indicate that it's associated with example 1 here. And that's my transfer function. So I can write my output as my input times my transfer function H1 of S. As a side point, you're used to ordering resistors in ohms or kiloohms or megaohms, but there's an equivalent way of describing a resistor in terms of its conductance, which is 1 over the resistance. 
Similarly, for impedance, there's a generalization of the concept of impedance called admittance, which is one over the impedance. Since we're going from voltage to current, we can think about H1 here as being a transadmittance. That transadmittance is a generalization of the concept of a transconductance that you might see in things like discussions of models for MOSFET transistors. Okay, so now let's do a more traditional example. Let's call this next example, example 2R. And what we'll do instead of looking at the output as the current, we'll say that the output is the voltage across the resistor. Well, the original term that I wrote here with the one in the numerator, that's the current flowing through the loop. So to get the voltage, all I need to do is multiply that current by R. Or alternatively, I could derive this form by using a voltage divider rule. In any case, all I would do is I would add an R here, I would add an R here. And of course, under this example, the output is now the voltage across the resistor. And let me change the subscripts. All right, here's my new transfer function. Now, interestingly, let's figure out what the various associated parameters are. The natural frequency squared is 1 over LC. So the natural frequency itself is just 1 over square root of LC. And we have an S in the numerator, so this is basically a bandpass filter. And in our canonical form, we have 2 zeta omega n equal to r over l. And notice that appears in the numerator as well. So this is one of those nice forms that's normalized to have a gain of 1 at the natural frequency at its maximum magnitude. All right, so we could write zeta equals r over l divided by 2 omega n. And let's see, that will give us r over 2l omega n is 1 over square root of LC, so we would put a square root of LC up here. And I wind up with R over 2 times square root of C over L. So that's our damping ratio. Okay, so let's do example 2C. And here, instead of taking the voltage across the resistor as our output voltage, we'll take it across the capacitor. I'm just erasing this here in order to make some space. So write plus minus VCT. And over here, I'll write plus minus, here's VCS. Did not leave myself a lot of room there. VCS is now my output. And here, instead of multiplying by R, either by thinking about multiplying the current around the loop, by the impedance of the capacitor or by using a voltage divider rule, I now have a 1 over Cs here. So I'll have a 1 over Cs here, and the Ss here now cancel. So I don't have the R here anymore, and then I'll wind up with something like a 1 over Lc sitting here in the numerator, and that gives me now a low-pass filter since I don't have any S terms here in the numerator, I just have a constant. Here, to make this a complete meaningful slide, I need to update this to be 2C. This is H2C, H2C, because this is my new transfer function. And to finish this off, I need to emphasize that in this particular example, our output is the voltage across the capacitor. And I'm sure you can guess what I'm going to do for my final example, which we'll call example 2L. We'll now measure the voltage across the inductor and declare that to be our output. All right, so now instead of 1 over Cs, again, either by using a voltage divider rule or by thinking about the current around the loop being multiplied by the impedance of the inductor, I'll have an LS in the numerator. And then I'll have an ls in the numerator here. And now if I think about what was originally at this term, if you'll recall, I had an s in the numerator here 
and an L in the denominator. This is what I originally had. That's what you'll get if I have everything written in white here and take that and divide by L. Anyway, if I do that, I'll wind up with an L here, and then I wind up with this extra S that winds up giving me an S squared. And then what happens here? Well, the L's will wind up canceling. So I wind up with just an S squared in the numerator. So I need to now declare that this is now a high pass filter. And again, to finish off the slide, I should change these C's to L's. I'm calling my transfer function big H sub 2L. And let's emphasize that the actual output variable here is the voltage across the inductor. And there you go.